fellow Africans and citizens of the world. If there is one country in Africa, and indeed in the entire world, which has been influenced by the life and work of Marcus Garvey, it must be Ghana. The first president of our nation, the man who led us in the final phase of our battle for freedom, the legendary Kwame Nkrumah, was a self-confessed apostle of Marcus Garvey and fell under his guidance during his student days in the United States of America in the 1930s. The first national shipping line of our country was named by him the Black Star Line in deliberate emulation of the Black Star Line, the shipping line established by Marcus Garvey in 1919 to assist in the repatriation of Africans in the United States to their homeland in Africa and to be the vehicle of trade between the two continents. Again, the proud national flag of our country has the Black Star as its centerpiece. Ghana's debt to Marcus Garvey is thus inescapable. Today, we are gathered all across the world to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the holding of Marcus Garvey's Convention of the Negro Peoples of the World in New York. At that seminal event, the Declaration of Rights of the Negro Peoples of the World was adopted. There can be little doubt about the impetus of the struggle for decolonization and independence that this convention provided. Indeed, the convention whose 100th anniversary we are commemorating was one of the critical events in the unfolding emergence of the Pan-African movement. A century on, the vision of an Africa free from colonialism, which was one of the main objects of the holding of the convention, has effectively been realized. And the continent must always remain thankful for its intervention. But I have no doubt that Marcus Garvey and indeed the 2,000 delegates who attended the convention wanted more than just to fulfill the dreams of political freedom and independence of their peoples, important as that was. The promise implicit in the drive for liberation was that freedom would inspire the rapid enhancement of the quality of life of the African peoples, and indeed, of all black people around the world, and banish the specter of mass poverty bequeathed to the African peoples by the long period of colonial exploitation. Alas, that has not happened, for a variety of reasons, some of which do not do us credit. Be that as it may, our generation has an opportunity to rededicate ourselves towards attaining the goals of guaranteeing the liberties and freedoms of the African peoples, employing the immeasurable wealth of Africa to satisfy the needs of the African peoples by resisting the continuous exploitation of her resources by external agencies, eradicating mass poverty in Africa, and promoting the prosperity, dignity, and unity of the African peoples. The name of Marcus Garvey will continue to bear testimony to the necessity of the African peoples on both sides of the Atlantic coming together in mutual solidarity to advance the interests and objectives of black people everywhere in the world. We should never forget the immemorial words of the great Jamaican reggae musician, Peter Tosh, who said, don't care where you come from. If you are black, you are an African. I'm an incurable optimist and believe in our capacity to reach these goals. And in doing so, I'm comforted by the words again of Marcus Garvey when he said, the black skin is not a badge of shame, 
but rather a glorious symbol of national greatness. I am confident we in Africa, and indeed all black peoples across the world, can achieve the greatness which our forefathers, with Marcus Garvey in the vanguard, dreamt of, and for which some paid the ultimate sacrifice, if we work together. We can do it. May God continue to bless Marcus Mosiah Garvey, Mother Africa, and us all. I thank you for your attention and wish you a successful teleforum.